So you would like to know how and when to use triangles when you're making Roman style mosaics. Well, you're in the right place. I'm Helen Miles and I'm here to teach you all the tips and tricks you need to make mosaics. In this video, we're going to be talking about using triangles in classically uh, classical inspired mosaics. So we're going to start by looking at this layout of tesserae in rows. And as you can see, uh, the tesserae are fairly uniform in uh, size and shape. So they're square or squarish or a little bit rectangle. And just as they would be in a classical mosaic, um, they're laid in rows. OK, so I'm now going to take one of these pieces, any, any piece, a random piece, out and insert in its place a triangle. So it's a very simple little exercise just to show you um, how the triangle stands out. I mean, obviously it stands out because it's a different shape, um, but it isn't purely because of that. It's also because it creates different shapes, spaces around it. So all the spaces between the square and squarish uh, tesserae are sort of running in lines, uh, not even lines, but they are lines where, of course, um, around the triangle, you've got triangular shaped uh, spaces as well. So you don't just have the triangle itself, but you also have the spaces next to the triangle. So the point of a classical inspired mosaic is to create a kind of restfulness and, and a kind of um, ease is the only word I can think of um, within the composition so that the eye, the viewer, looks at, looks at parts of the mosaic that you're directing them to look at, rather than being distracted um, by, by uh, extraneous things. Because, of course, a mosaic is made up of, of, of often thousands of tesserae, which in itself is, 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 is distracting. So if you're not careful about the way you lay your tesserae, if you're not thinking about the shapes, you'll often end up with um, distractions which lead the eye away from, from the point, the, ma the main focal point of the piece. So I'm going to illustrate that more in a minute. Using triangles in classically inspired pieces um, is particularly problematic because um, triangles are essentially little arrows. So they're pointing in a direction. Um, so they can come in all uh, sorts of shapes and sizes, but the, lo the longer en end is, is the direction in which the um, kind of little arrow is pointing. So obviously the, a longer one would uh, be pointing down here, this one is pointing in this direction, this one in this direction, and this one in this direction, and so forth. So the eye is being led in the direction that the, um, the triangular arrow is pointing. This is a mosaic that I made years and years and years ago. And in, in this mosaic, none of the Roman rules are applied. So it's quite interesting to look at it as it illustrates why the Roman rules are helpful. I think this is a really useful example of um, why you have to be careful about using triangles. Um, so... Um, you can see that I basically used triangles here um, to fill spaces without thinking at all about the effect the triangles are having on, on the mosaic. So, uh, for example, uh, when I'm going around the tops of the ears, um, I've got these fiddly spaces um, and they're triangular shaped spaces, so I filled them with triangles. I've put uh, triangles in the corner and along where the lines meet the border. And um, you can see them um, everywhere. Because all I was doing was thinking, as I just said, you've got a space to fill. That space is, is um, triangle shape, so I'm going to just put in a triangle. Um, so you can see the effect is distracting and fuzz fussy. Um, there's too much going on because, of course, the main focal point of this piece is the antelope's head. 
I don't want you, as the viewer, to be looking at this area because it's not relevant to the piece. Um, so that's it's a very good example of why it's important to minimise the use of triangles or to use triangles purely where and when you want them. But in this discussion about triangles and um, the potential hazards that um, confront you when you're using them in classical inspired pieces, you mustn't think that I'm in, um, suggesting that you don't use them. Of course, triangles have their place and you'll often want and use them. Um, it's just that you have to use them thoughtfully and use them where you need them and use them uh, intentionally. So in, in this piece, um, I'll put a, a whole photo up on the screen uh, after, after I've, I've explained. But anyway, it's a, a mosaic of a goose. And in this piece, the uh, classical rules have been applied. And I have used triangles. Um, you can see them here on the beak, uh, where, where, of course, um, that's, a, that's the shape of the, uh, of the animal's beak. So therefore, a triangle is necessary. Um, I've used them on the tips of the leaves to emphasise the kind of directional uh, movement of the leaf. Um, they're not strictly necessary, but I wanted them. Um, I have also used them on the, the feet of the goose. So plenty of triangles in there. Um, and, I've, and I've used them... Um, on, on the wings here to, to sort of emphasize again the, the movement and the flow and the, and the kind of featheriness of, of the bird's body. Um, I was hoping that I would be able to show you the whole goose, but um, my technological um, expertise uh, is fairly limited. And for some reason, probably because of the size of the, the screen, I can't get the whole goose up there. But anyway, I think you saw enough of it in the previous clip uh, to get the idea. When you do need to use a triangle, but you need it for um, filling in or for another purpose rather than an intentional use in the design, you just nip off the tip, the pointy tip, to blunten it, which makes it, um, even though it's a tiny cut, it makes it a lot less pointy and therefore less prominent within the design. Let's round up this little video uh, by creating a triangle. So I've taken my, my tessera, this is Winkleman's unglazed ceramic, and I'm cutting it in half. So I've got two rectangles. Then I'm going to lay my blade fully across the, uh, the tile to where I want the cut to be. And I'm cupping my hand around it so it doesn't uh, jump across the room and pressing down hard. And you can see half of it is shattered, and then I've but I've created a triangle from the other half. So let's do that again with this uh, chinka tile. So I'm going to lay my blade across. Oops, it doesn't want to cut. Ah, so it's not always easy. So that's a very pointy one. And so remember, just nip off the tip and they're much more useful and less distracting than a regular triangle. Um, so there we go, triangles in classically inspired mosaics. Uh, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe below.